Welcome to the Kansas NG911 GIS training series. The first topic for the series is the use of the Kansas NG911 template geodatabase. In this episode, we'll do an overview of the geodatabase and then load data into it. The template geodatabase was created to help local data stewards store and maintain the GIS data that will be required for next generation 911 call routing. The format for that data has been set by the Kansas NG911 GIS data model. Both the data model document and the template geodatabase are available for download from the DASC website or from the Kansas 911 Coordinating Council website. There are two versions of the template geodatabase. One is for data stored in State Plain Kansas North projection and one for State Plain Kansas South. Make sure that you pick up the database that is appropriate to the data you will be working with. Our sample data is in State Plain, Kansas North, and so I have picked up the database for State Plain, Kansas North, which has an N at the end of the name. The other one has an S. And now, let's take a look inside. Inside the template geodatabase, you will find the feature data set called NG911, which contains all of the spatial data that is required for call routing. You will also find the road alias table, which is a table of alternate road names, and the relationship class that ties that road alias table back to the road centerline layer. Inside the feature data set, you will see all of the spatial data, as well as the topology, that keeps it all working together appropriately. Every required feature class from the Kansas NG911 GIS data model is in the template geodatabase. And if we take a look inside one of them, we will see that all of the fields that are in that data model are in the database. Yes, there are quite a few of them, aren't there? And each of those fields for example, this county left field here, has been set up to be the proper length, the proper data type, and if there is a domain or a list of valid values defined in the data model, it has been created in the geodatabase and assigned to the field. Between the domains and the topology, data stored in the template geodatabase should be well maintained in the format required for effective NG911 call routing. We will discuss the attributes in more detail in future videos, as well as working with a topology. But for right now, let's get some data loaded in to the geodatabase. Okay, to load data into the geodatabase, we are going to go into ArcMap. You can actually do this from our catalog, but inside ArcMap you have some more robust tools. Bad news is those tools aren't actually on any of the official toolbars, so you have to go and customize it. You go to Customize, and then Customize Mode, and that opens up this window. On the Commands tab, you come here and you type whatever command that you're looking for. Um, in our case, Load Objects. All right, if you haven't ever customized a toolbar before, don't worry. It's very simple. You just grab the command, just click on it and drag it, You'll see it comes with you, and then you place it wherever you want it, wherever it makes most sense to you. I'm going to put it at the end of my bottom toolbar. There you go. Close the window, and now I have the load objects command available to me. You'll notice that it is grayed out right now. That's because in order to do load objects, you have to be inside an edit session, and that means we have to have a feature class loaded. And in this case, we are going to grab the authoritative boundary layer. So here's our database. Here is our empty authoritative boundary layer. We're going to click Add. There's no data in it, as you can see. And we're going to begin editing it. Since there's only one feature class in the table, you can just go to Editor and start editing. And now Load Objects has lit up for us. So when we click that button, we get the object loader. So um, we need to grab our input data. This is the data that we're going to load in. So if I open this up, I actually have shapefiles, and for our test data here, the authoritative boundary, or the boundary of the area for which 
my data is authoritative is actually the county boundary. So I have this county poly layer or county polygon layer. I'm going to click on it and hit open. And it populates it in this thing here, but you have to come down and click add, add it to the list. As you can imagine, you can add more than one layer to load at a time, but for our purposes, we only need one. So we'll click next. You choose a target layer for the objects to be loaded into. We only have one, so we have a pretty simple decision here. And we click next. And now we need to match up the fields that are in our shape file. You can see them if you click here with the fields that are in our feature class so the data can transfer over. Now this particular shape file is pretty simple. There's only three fields and only one of them is significant to us and that's the name field. I'm going to have that come over and populate the display field in the feature class. And click next. Now you have the option here to load all of the source data or to load only the features that satisfy a particular query. The shape file that we are working with only has one feature so we're just going to go ahead and load everything. Click Next. And these are some options that you have that we're going to go over with another feature class for this particular one they don't apply. So we'll hit Next. Then you get a summary showing you the answers to all of your questions. If you're happy with them, we'll click Finish. And now we have the authoritative boundary layer loaded. If you do load this and you don't see anything, don't panic. You're probably just zoomed to the wrong extent. You can right click on the layer and go to Zoom to Layer and that'll bring it up on the screen. So we had one polygon in our shape file. We now have one polygon in our feature class. And if we go to open the attribute table, we'll see that the only fields that have been populated are the display field that I brought over and the two fields updated by in last update that I have set to automatically populate in this data. And I'll be showing you how to do that in a future video. But we have just loaded the authoritative boundary Next, we're going to go to the road centerline file. So our first step is to add the road centerline feature class, the empty road centerline feature class, to our table of contents and to our map. We are still in the edit session, so we can just go to load objects and grab our input data. So I have a shape file here that is the streets layer, and I am going to bring it into the input data window. I'm going to add it again. Hit next. It's going to ask me again to choose the target layer. It has the right one selected, so I can hit next. And now we're going to deal with fields for a minute. So now we're looking at a situation where we have a lot more attributes, and some of them are already populated. Um, if you scroll down here in the list, you'll see all of these attributes over to the side. Um, we know we have left from, left to, right from, and right to inside the data, so we need to go in and grab. This is the left from, left to, right from, right to, from the shape file. And you need to go through and do that for every attribute um, that is already in your data. Uh, you'll notice that if the computer could tell, if art could tell, which field needed to be matched to which, like this is zip left, zip right. Uh, it, it did that. You might want to check and make sure that it didn't do anything unintentional. Um, you have surface here. And if you get messed up or offline, you can hit reset and that takes them all back. But once you get them all set, you click next. For the purposes of this discussion, we're going to say that we want to load all of the source data or all of the street segments. So we're going to hit next. And now we have these questions available. The first one is asking, do you want me to snap to features that are in the map already? It's not really something that we need to worry about. The second one, though, may be. It's a question about validation. And basically what it wants to know is, once you get everything loaded in there, do you want me to go back and check, making sure that all of the values you have in fields, which have defined domains, are correct? If you have been doing a lot of work with your data already, and it is already very close to the standard presented in the Kansas NG911 GIS data model, then you probably want to say yes here. If you anticipate that most of the stuff has already been resolved, then you can have the application actually select the features that do not meet the requirement 
and show them on your screen once the data loads. It could be really helpful. If you haven't been working with your data or you have fields that you are certain are not going to meet that data model standard yet, in all likelihood it won't be very helpful. On my street center line layer, the one that I am loading for this demonstration, if I were to ask it to validate, it would actually come up and select every single feature um, and say all of these need to be checked, which I already know because a couple of the fields I don't store the same way the data model requires them to be stored. So if you are in a position where you feel like your data is very close to done, I highly recommend using that validation feature. Otherwise, just leave it as no and go on by. So again, we get the summary. We hit finish and the load begins. Now this has a, about 4,000 or 4,300 actually features and so it's going to take a few seconds to load, but not too long and there's my street layer. Let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so we can go through the data. We can see all of the nulls, places where I didn't bring things in, and then the fields populated where things did come in. Everything seems to look pretty good as I roll across. So all in all, I'm happy. Now before you load your data into one of the template geodatabases, it's important to consider the attributes that you are currently storing. You may have attributes in your data that are not represented at all in the data model or that are represented differently than you need to store them. The best way to handle that is to add fields to the feature classes inside the template geodatabase to hold the data you're wanting to maintain. You can add as many fields to the feature classes as you need. And don't just think about adding fields that don't exist at all within the feature class. It may be that you have a field that is present within the data model, but is stored in a different way than you need to store it. For example, the surface type in the road center line feature class is very limited within the data model. It only has a few valid values. You may store really detailed information about the surfaces of your roads, and there's nothing wrong with that. The surface attribute within the road center line feature class in the data model has one purpose and the surface attribute that you're maintaining in your data may have another purpose. So it's just fine to hold two surface fields. They just have to have different names. Let me show you really quick how to add a field in case you haven't done it before. And you can do it through catalog or through the catalog window, but you can also go right into the feature class, go to the attribute table, and go to add field. This allows you to put in a name. Let's put in right away. Uh, you can select a field type. You can select an alias, default value, all of that. And once you're finished, you hit OK. And it just adds your new field directly to the attribute table that's present. If you do this before you load your data, then when you load your data in, you can select to assign those values to come over. And you'll have not only everything you need to meet the data model standard, but also all of the data that you have been recording and using locally. So that represents the end of the loading data video. Our next video in the series is going to cover working with attributes inside the template geodatabase, how to assign them, how to make your life a little bit easier by assigning default values, and how to do some conversions from your data as it may currently be sitting uh, into the data model format. Thank you for your time and attention. This series is brought to you by the GIS Subcommittee of the Kansas 911 Coordinating Council.